Hi, Lake Speed Jr., Total Steel Piston Rings, and we're back here at Ellen Engineering yet again, continuing with Piston Rings 101. And we've talked a lot about different aspects of piston rings, but one of the things we need to touch on are the actual types of piston rings. A typical piston ring package is going to be a three ring setup. Let me explain what that means. There's the top ring, which is your compression ring. Its job, 100%, is to seal the compression gases above the piston. The second ring, its job is 80% oil control, 20% compression. Again, back we talked about having the pinned ring that Porsche uses in some of their modern engines. The gapless ring is a oil control ring when you use it as a gapless second. And then the primary oil control is the oil control ring, which is a three-piece ring setup that contains two oil scrapers and an expander. Now, the way this works is the expander keeps the, the two oil rails separate. It has slots through it that allow the oil to drain back because it's the scrapers that actually touch the bore, not the expander. And the expander is actually the spring that creates the tension. There's these little tabs on the back of the expander, and when you put it in the bore, it butts together and creates the tension that pushes the scraper face against the wall that removes the oil as the cylinder moves down in stroke. So, why does all this matter? Because when you can lower the ring tension, you can free up horsepower. And you may wonder, well, how do you lower tension? Again, the expander is a spring, so you can change the width of the rail, the size of the tab, the length of the expander in order to create tension. A traditional you know, small block Chevrolet, for example, been around for, <laughs> seems like a hundred years, those cast iron bore older engines tend to have higher ring tensions, typically 20 pounds and up. Even older Porsche engines that are air-cooled with cast iron bores are gonna have a high tension oil ring. Well, that 20 pounds of force is dragging against the cylinder wall the whole time. Higher tension, higher friction, less power, less fuel economy. This is an air oil separator. And you may be familiar with one of these already, but what this actually does is separates the, crank, the air and the oil that's whipped up inside the crankcase. But it also creates a vacuum in the crankcase. By applying vacuum to the crankcase, which is helping to draw the oil and air into the air oil separator, by doing that, I can now lower the tension in the oil ring. I can go down to 10, 7, 8 pounds of tension, cut that tension in half, freeze up horsepower, improves fuel economy, but if I don't have this working properly, guess what happens to my oil control? goes out the window. I either have to have a high tension to control the oil, or I can use the air oil separator creating vacuum to help assist the ring to get the benefit. The trick is, how do you know if your air oil separator is working? Well, handy dandy, our friends at uh, Calus Transport have their CR Tools manometer that goes right in, as you can see, into the oil filler cap and can give you a direct reading of the performance of your air oil separator so you know whether or not all of your systems are functioning properly. Again, using the proper tools in engineering, you can achieve lower friction, better power, better fuel economy, but all those parts and pieces have to work together. Fortunately, you have the tools available to you to make sure that everything's working properly so you get the full benefits of increased horsepower, better fuel economy, without having the problem of increased oil consumption. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.